Let us pray once again. Awesome God, thank you. Thank you, Father. Your will be done in these moments that we have here, Father. And just continually grow us, Father, so that we can trust you, submit to you, totally surrender, Father, to your beautiful plan of becoming fully your masterpiece. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, it's so powerful that, because I was wondering, you know, when Becky asked me about music, I'm not, I don't know many titles of songs, you know, I know a lot of singing and things like that, you know, singing songs, but titles, forget it. When they always ask me, I'm like, you know what, you just pray about it and, and see what the Lord does and how he directs because I just never know of what title to use. And there's so many, amen? There's so many. But I, what I loved about this one, when she sent this to me, and just hearing the words, you know, you're making a ma masterpiece, you're shaping my existence, my soul, who I am, you know, and, and, and it's done within us. Because as we said earlier in, um, in, in our first talk, that um, we are given the full measure, amen, of the Holy Spirit. The full measure is given to us. And, and sometimes we have to ask, how much of us does the Holy Spirit have? To continually do the work that God has called us to do through his Holy Spirit. And so this is why it's so important to you know, continually understand, dig deep into the word of God to understand what he is doing. And, that, and that's what I, what I love about this song is there, it's always, you're making a masterpiece. You're reshaping my life. You're moving when I can't see where I'm moving. You know, and, it's, and then he says, it's like it was your plan from the start to finish, to do this work in this manner, right? To finish this work. And we know that from the beginning, he says, we find it in John 3, 3, right? That we have to be born again. We, and, and born again means a regeneration. You know, being born again all over again, cell by cell, thought by thought. We're being re, re, um, tra transformed and the way we're thinking, the way we, we, we were thinking at one time, God starts to change that, amen? We must be changed, but it's, he who does the work. We're here this morning. We praise God for the blessing of being here with fellow believers, with all other followers of Jesus Christ. We, we have that privilege to be here this morning, but we have all come for one reason, one reason alone, to hear and see God through the pages of Scripture. Amen? This is why we come every every time that we are given the blessing to come into his sanctuary, to hear, to be able to perceive, to be able to see how good he is, how good God is. Because as it was said earlier, there are two kinds of people in this world. Those that are blind and deaf who will never be able to see or hear. And those who are blind and deaf who are made to see and hear, amen? And that's us here this morning, that we may able to be able to see and hear how good God is. And it starts with his grace. It starts because he is a good God, because he is an all-loving father. And the word grace, that word grace, the Greek word comes from, we, well, if you didn't know that, it comes from joy a delight in the Lord. And, and it also says that it's a, um, it's, it's a, you know when he says in Jeremiah that I have loved you since the beginning, I have loved you with an everlasting love and with loving kindness, I draw you in. Grace, loving kindness and grace, it's the same word. Grace is God's loving kindness that draws us in because of God's grace, all because of what he has done. For we have it in front of us, Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace you have been saved through faith and not that of us. Amen. Praise God for that, right? That I didn't need to do anything but to submit, to be saved. Praise God. It's 
all by its own, its own. I'm saved. And I know today, and we know today that we are saved until the day of redemption of Jesus Christ, that he takes us home. When we can live confidently in that, we continually become the full masterpiece that we were meant to become. Because as it says in his word, he makes everything beautiful in his time. He makes everything beautiful. He calls you beautiful. <laughs> he calls you beautiful. He calls you precious. He calls me beautiful. How can I not then delight and joy in grace? Grace. And the more we understand grace, the more we become living vessels of grace to others. Oh, how this world needs grace. Amen? Right? And as the brother said, you know, we have many other churches that maybe don't believe the exact same way that is believed here. But if they love Jesus Christ and he is the heart of where they're at, they're all good. We're all going to the same place because there only, there's only one place in Christ Jesus, and that's heaven bound. Grace, joy, delight. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. When we delight in our Savior, when we delight in our Lord, we can't help <laughs> but to have the joy of the Lord and that zeal to do his work. We get almost anxious in a good way, like, what next, Lord? What's coming up, Lord? Because you say, I am saved by grace, and I don't have to do anything to obtain it, because then he says, for you and me, we are his workmanship, his master peace because anything that God does oh is good and like he says in the beginning of time very good <laughs> extremely good we are his workmanship created how in Christ Jesus amen in Christ Jesus which God for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them Part of the masterpiece and becoming God's masterpiece is understanding our gifts. The gifts that have been given to us. First and foremost, it's what? The gift, the main gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's read that. Let's go to John. Open up your Bibles to John 16. John 16, starting in verse 7. Are we all there, amen? We all there? Okay, let's read. John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples, amen? His believers. It is to your advantage, for your good, that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, which we all need, amen, <laughs> to live this life, for the helper will come to you. And will not come to you if I don't, I don't leave. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin of, and of righteousness and of judgment. So through our lives, he is speaking and teaching the world through us of what is of Christ and what is not. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. We already know that if we are in Christ, we are complete in Christ. We don't have to worry about the ruler of this world because we stand, we walk, we live with the ruler of creation, which is Christ himself. How, and then he says, however, when the spirit, when he, the spirit of truth has come, what will he do? He will guide us into all truth. Amen? 
for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you the things to come. He will glorify me and he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Amen. And he goes, all things that the father has are mine. Therefore, I, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. It's Jesus Christ. We are his. He's going to declare and teach and show us the way we should walk. Amen. Just like Psalm 32, right? That the Lord will guide us and teach us with his own eye. I will instruct you. I will instruct you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. God himself. Because of Christ dying on a cross, his death, burial, and resurrection sits at the right hand of the Father and through his Holy Spirit lives and resides through us. Amen? We have that promise. We have been, been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, and the Holy Spirit, he's the one, it's, you know, it, it's, it encompasses everything. As we read earlier that we have been given everything, the anointing, which is the Holy Spirit. So because we have the Holy Spirit, we have everything we need to be successful and truly um, succeed in our walk. And so the Holy Spirit, we know that the fruits of the Spirit, amen, that comes because those are the fruit of the Spirit. They, they, show, they show the world that we are different because we are loving, because we are patient. Because we, we do have to long, long suffering. We don't like that one. Kindness and graciousness, right? And joy. There's always joy. God is always talking about joy because Jesus is joy. Because when you know Jesus, you can't help but to be joyful because of what he did, because of his grace. And grace comes from the word joy, delighting, taking pleasure in. And when we feel good, Everything is good. Amen? When we feel good, everything, then we have a clear mind. We have the peace that we need to understand the word of God so that we can walk in it. Not blindly and not being deaf, but we can see and hear when he speaks to us through his word. And the Holy Spirit, that's his work in our life. You know, and... The Holy Spirit, he guides us in all things, as Jesus Christ said. I mean, moment by moment sometimes, day by day. As Brother Chuck was saying, you know, he just prays that he gets home safely because of all oh, the chaos on the roads and now people with all their gadgets that they have to, you know, eat breakfast and text while they're driving. That's crazy, right? But that's reality. And yesterday, you know, we left home coming you know we were going to stay in the area because we live a, a couple hours away and we didn't want to make the drive early this morning because it's a little harder and just in case something were to happen we just wanted to be sure that we came here because we were looking so forward to being with y this group because it had been a couple years I think it's been and we just we were excited we packed up the car and right away when we got on to um, 45 coming here um 41 41. And right away, my husband, who is alert to all things, I mean, you can't, you know, put anything past him. Um, you know, sometimes I bring little promise cards or my, some of my books that I've written or little pamphlets, and I'll leave them. If we're at a hotel, wherever we are at, I'll leave things behind. But he'll go back and say, oh, but you forgot something. I go, no, I didn't. Leave it there. I always got I always to watch him before I leave the room because he wants to bring, the, he wants to, he thinks I forgot things there. This morning we were at the by the breakfast area, and I left a nice pamphlet there about the things of God. And he goes, he's looking, I already saw. I know he's going to look by me because he knows I forget everything. But these are purposely, I'm going to leave these on purpose. I said, no, I didn't forget to leave it there. We, we left, and um, anyways, we left home, and right away my husband says, wow, what's this trailer is just almost driving erratically. I mean, it's just, it was like, he was kind of going off to the side, so we're thinking, huh probably getting, you know, tired or something, and he drove off to the shoulder area because he was on the right lane, and there was just two lanes, the left and the right, and he kind of drove off to the shoulder, and then all this, um, you know, the, the, the uh, remnants of the salt and all that just coming up, and my husband was like, wow, what is going on there? There's all this, like, powder flying up. What is he doing? I'm like, well, maybe he kind of doze off for a moment, you know, and 
we're behind him. You know, we're about maybe about five cars behind um, him. And we're just kind of um, just watching. And he just kept swerving to the shoulder and swerving. And then um, really aggressively at times. And we're like, oh, my goodness, what is going on with this man? So he goes, you should pick up your phone. Just I, I, We may have to call 911. And I'm thinking, you think so? And then we're like, well, let's see if he kind of strains up. Then he starts going just into the left lane and just just swerving into the left and into the right and into the shoulder. We're like, oh my goodness, now he's, he goes, call 911 right now. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'm gonna call. He, and he's all, he does also EMT part time, you know. And so um, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna give it to you because you just know what to say. <laughs> and so the, right when we're going past an exit, the, the guy in the, in the truck, he gets off. We're like, oh, and then he's already on, on the phone with 911. She goes, he, he says to the person, oh, they already got off, so kind of like, okay, things are good. Maybe he's going to stop and rest. No, he kept on plowing through the exit, uh, went right past the stop sign. I said, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. I said, he's not stopping, Joe. And then all of a sudden, this, the trailer starts kind of bobbing like that. And I go, he's going over. He's tipping over. And so we're passing the exit because, you know, we thought he was just going to stay there. But then you know how there's always an on-ramp as well. So my husband right away pulled by the on-ramp. And we're like, where did it go? It went down a hill. So my husband reverses and starts, he goes, let's just go over there. And he, he turns off the car. And, and I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? You know, because I'm like, thank God for my husband. You know, nerves are steel here. And he goes, just bring the car keys with you. So he gives me the car keys, you know, and I put them on the dash, and I'm about to close the door. I just told you, bring the car keys. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sorry, honey. He goes, he goes, keep it together, Maria. Keep it together. <laughs> See, I, I need them. <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry, honey. Okay, I got the keys. He goes running. The truck is down. It only stopped because he hit a tree. So Joel goes running down there. I'm up here. There's some people here. All I hear is another woman saying, he almost hit me, he almost hit me. And I'm thinking, this is a miracle, you guys. This is a miracle. This guy, the freeway was low, I mean, just full with cars. And all these cars, we were kind of flashing our emergencies, but kind of like to prepare them to stop. But we didn't know if they were seeing our emergency lights. Um, but everyone was able to stop because, I mean, he was swerving. He would have taken out a car or two. Um, but all these cars are behind and stayed behind. Um, and so I'm like, no, what you're seeing is a miracle that he didn't hurt anyone. But, you know, they're, now they're checking his situation out. And um, my husband calls up to me, Maria, do you have sugar? Do you have some sugar? And I remember at home, you know, like every time we're off on to our next journey, I always clean out my purse from all the stuff that I had in there prior. And I had these packets of sugar that I took out. And I was about to put them away. And the Holy Spirit told me, leave three in your purse. So I put them in my, I said, okay, I'll just leave a couple in my purse, you know, and, and I didn't know why. You never know if it's the Holy Spirit, just your mind kind of thinking sometimes. But of course, in this situation, I remembered I had them in my purse. So I ran, ran back to the car, got my um, it was, um, sugar, got some brown sugar, and went running back. And then another gentleman said, I'll take it down. And he ran down there, and um, Joel started you know, giving the, the two bags of, of sugar. And then the, I hear the woman again. I almost got hit. He almost hit me because if she would have, she was, if I would have stopped at that stop sign, he would have plowed into me and taken her. When I turn around, I said, Kathy? She goes, Maria? And, she, <laughs> and I said, what are you doing? And she goes, I kind of thought that was you, Maria, but I'm thinking, what is Maria doing here? <laughs> and it was a friend of mine, Kathy. So little did we know, little did we, you know, and this is such a, this is a beautiful thing about God in his ways. Even when we don't see what he's doing, he's up to something good. And so little did I know when we're calling out to Jesus, we're not only calling out for the driver, but praising that he didn't hurt anyone else, but we're all, we were also calling out for our friend and her husband that were there. And right almost, they, they could have been you know plowed in with, with that semi. And thank God after the Sugar was given, and, you know, just a little bit of um, um, attention to him. The firefighters came and other EMTs, and he walked back up the hill. So he, and all he wanted to know, did I hurt anyone? Did I hurt anyone? And so we know it was, you know, of course, low, low. It was low, so low, his blood sugar was at 27. Hey, honey, 27. At 27, you can't even speak. And he was just, did I hurt anyone? Did I hurt anyone? And my husband, with the grace that he had, he goes, no, just this old tree, and it looked like it was dead anyways. 
I said, you're great, babe. I said, you are just great. You know, and he was so happy to hear that he didn't hurt anyone. And, and that's how God is with us. When he's creating a masterpiece in our life, it's not to hurt us. It's to mold us. It's to grow us. It's, to, it's for us to hear and see daily his grace, his joy, his loving kindness. He draws us in through that and that alone, not hurt and pain, although hurt and pain for whatever situation it comes to us by. We can surrender that to God and ask for clarity of mind. Lord, why am I going through this? This doesn't feel right. It hurts, Lord. And all he's going to do is embrace us and tell, tell us to trust him with it because it's in the hurt at times. It's in the struggle. It's in those challenges that we are able to perceive and see him with greater light. We must remember that all things, he says in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for what? For good. For good. All things work together for good. And then he says in Ephesians, for the good works. Do you understand? Do you see the connection? All things work together for good, for the good works that he's doing in our life. To those who love him and to those who are called in accordance to his purpose. It's all about him. When we travel and speak the word of God, it's all about Jesus. It's all about his righteousness. We just have the privilege to come and share his word. But all we pray for, and I know just like your church, all you pray for is that when you come here or you bring a visitor or you see someone that has not come here, that this is the day that the Lord has made, that they will rejoice and be glad in it because they learned about his grace, what he does. And through that grace that he will lead us and guide us every step of the way. Because Christ came to live in us and through us, through his spirit. And he, Paul says it best in Galatians 1.12. And I love this because this is so key for our growth. We don't have to be dependent. Although, although it is so important to have godly teachers. Amen. In any church. Amen. Men and women that have a proven character, that they are living the word of God, that they love the word of God, that they share the word of God. Those are the kind of teachers we want, amen? We want counsel. We want direction from godly people. We want people that we know are taking in his word because his word is complete. His word has everything we need, and we are given the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and we know all things to do the right thing every time we're called to do it. And when we fall short, we'll be convicted by the Holy Spirit to get back on track. When we maybe don't say things the right way, or a difficult person comes through, we can still have enough grace to love on them. Amen? That's what we need. We're difficult at times, too. I know it's easy for my husband to love me. <laughs> I knew I could laugh at that one. <laughs> we, only <laughs> we only can love each other because God loved us first. I can only learn to love my husband as God loves him and the brother his wife because God loved us, loved us first. And because I draw from his loving kindness, and he draws me in, I can love the brethren. Maybe when they're not so friendly. Maybe when the grace is not so graceful. But we can do, uh, God does such a work in us and through us, and it's only through the power. Remember what we said earlier? That Paul would understand the power of the resurrection. Remember, we cannot have a resurrection until we have a crucifixion, amen, of the flesh. We have to just give that to the Lord. And then as God continually teaches us, it's, uh, Paul says it here, Galatians 1, 12, and I love this. He said, 
we can even read from verse 11. So Galatians 1, 11. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me, Paul saying this, which was preached by me is not according to man. It's not according to what I'm, to woman. It's not according to us. For neither, for I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it. But where did it come through? But it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Wow. So it's, it's, you know, the brother can be up here speaking and teaching. I can be up here speaking and teaching. But the only way you are going to understand, and I'm going to un- understand, if the Holy Spirit of God ha- makes you see, makes you to hear, it's the only way. We can't do it. Just like we can't be born again by doing good works and I got to do this and I got to do that. No, the only thing we have to do is submit. Submit and surrender daily. And the more we submit, the more powerful we are in the hands of God that he can use us. The more beautiful the masterpiece comes together. The more strokes the Lord can give and do and make every stroke is beautiful but oh the full masterpiece it's breathtaking because it's God's masterpiece and it points to him and him alone and this is the thing we just have to submit it it's that's why Jesus says come to you me come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden, are tired of doing it in your own way and being fruitless and not seeing the results you want to see. That's why Jesus in, in John 15, he tells us like nine times in a few verses, abide, abide, abide. Remaining, and that means remaining, remaining in the process of becoming all that he needs for us to become. Remain in my word. Remain in me. The sap comes through the vine, and we're just the branch. We're just there. You know, sometimes, you know, a little shorter, a little higher. Sometimes, you know, after a good potluck, just like almost like this, you know. We're just the branch. We're just the branch. He says just remain. Be still and know that I am God. Then the vein, the vine starts to come, right? Amen? The vine starts to come. The sap is through the vine. The vine what? Feeds the branch. He feeds us through his word. No one can feed us like Jesus feeds us. He says, when you taste and see, when you drink of this, you shall never thirst again. Ever. And when you speak, What will flow out of you? Rivers of living water. Who's the living water? Christ himself. The fountain of living water. He goes, because when you are filled with me, all you're going to do is speak of me. And this is why Paul said, when you speak to one another, how did he say we should speak? How does he tell us to speak? With psalms and hymns. And spiritual things. Because that's what gives life. Because Christ himself is a word of life. So if I'm going to speak anything, I want to speak the words of Christ. And I won't be able to help but to speak that. Because when he lives in and through me, we are just an extension of Christ himself. Demonstrating his love and power. Do Do you hear that? We are an extension of Jesus Christ, our Savior. His existence is living through us, and a demonstration of his power is being revealed to others that are looking at us. But it's all pointing to Christ and Christ alone. To see the word unfold before us and to keep growing in his masterpiece, we have to remember that we are all given gifts. Do we know what our gifts are? Do we know for certain what are our gifts? 
If you don't, we need to know them because it's part of the process in growing in the masterpiece. Let's go to Second Peter 4. 1 Peter 4. 1 Peter 4. 1 Peter 4, and going to verse 7. When you're there, say amen. First Peter 4. What does it say there? First Peter 4, starting in verse 7. And it says here, But the end of all things is, is at hand. Do we believe that, right? We know. We know Christ is coming soon to take us home. Amen? Yeah. But before that, he has work for us to do. Amen? 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 He has work for us to do. Yeah. There's nothing more exciting than God's work. It's an adventure. Amen? Then he says, but the end of things is at hand. Therefore, be serious. Be serious in your walk. Be watchful in what? In prayer. Amen? Prayer. And then he says, and above all things, have fervent love for one another. Is that easy to do? No. We have to be submitted to the Holy Spirit to love the way we need to love. Even you'll be surprised how much you can love when we love through the Holy Spirit. Like, did I just do that, Lord? Did you just do that through me? (laughs) Good boy, Lord. And then he says, "Um, for love, what will it do? It will cover a multitude of sins. Amen. As each one, hear this, brothers and sisters, 10. As each one has received a gift. Besides the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are given a gift to live out our ministry. We all have a ministry if we are followers of Jesus Christ. We all have a ministry. And the ministry is, is, um, flourishes and grows as you administer your gift. So he goes, we have all been given, received a gift. Minister it to one another as good. So another good works, good stewards, good things of the what? Manifold grace of God. That our gifts and what we do with them, that they will show even God's grace in a greater light. Manifold means The various colors, the various ways, the various um, depths of God's grace. And we don't fully understand the grace until we walk in the grace that God unfolds it before us. He goes, if anyone speaks, what should they speak of? Verse 11. The teachings of God, the oracles of God, his word. If you speak and you're going to counsel and you're going to give direction, speak the words of God. I had such a heart to be a psychologist. I wanted to go back to school. I was set up to go to college. I had my two, we had our two children already, and I already was signed up to um, get a, you know, start my degree in psychology. I just had a heart, especially knowing the Lord. I just wanted to counsel people, and I thought that was the right way to go. And right when I was going to start in that month, God called me to homeschool my children. I mean, I had everything lined up. I even had received some some, um, funding for that and everything just to, you know, go to school to get my degree in psychology. Little did I know the Lord wanted me to counsel my children (laughs) through homeschooling. But that also in this, this stage of my life, I'm counseling more than ever using only the word of God because I believe that for every situation, for every hardship and challenge, everything is found in his word. And I mean every, amen, don't we believe that? Everything is found in the word of God. So he says, if anyone speaks, let him speak of the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies. What is the kind of ability and skill that God supplies us? What is the ability and the skill that God supplies us with? The power of his Holy Spirit, his endless wisdom, his endless love, his his endless teaching. He's guiding us with his eye. (laughs) That's why we can call him Abba Father, Daddy God. 
It's an intimate relationship. When they say Abba, Father, it's an intimacy that God really becomes our daddy. Our daddy. So that he, will, he or she will do it in the ability which God gives us that all things, in verse 11, that all things, God, that in all things God may be glorified through Christ Jesus, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. All glory to him. If anybody ever points to me, to him. I praise him for him, for whatever abilities and ministries you all have to him, for his glory forever and ever, for him to, to um, for the dominion, right? For the glory and, and the power um, and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. That he will dominate us in a beautiful manner. That he will control our words. That he will control our feelings. That he will control our minds in a beautiful manner because we're one with him. Remember, God's not somewhere far away controlling us like a puppet. No, he's one with us. He's one with us because of what Christ did. And through the power of his Holy Spirit working in and through us. And he continually unfolds it before us. Go to Philippians. Philippians 2. Philippians 2. Talking once again about the the precious word of God. I'm going to end with this verse here. Philippians 2.16. Actually, it's worth worth reading every verse around it, but we're going to start with 14 because I think we all all need this every day. I know I pray for this all the time. And when I do complain, I say, Lord, forgive me. For if you permit it, then it's for me to learn something. Amen? And he says, so he says in Philippians 2, verse 14, do all things without complaining and grumbling, disputing, arguing amongst each other, everything. Someone wants to argue, then walk away. Don't be part of that. Don't be part of that. Because that's not of God. Once it becomes an argument and dispute, it's not of God. Because God is a God of peace and of love and of a sound mind. And we know when to speak and when not to speak. That you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom he's telling us what? To shine as lights in the world. Perverse and crooked and generation. We see that everywhere, right? And he says, but you're going to shine <laughs> because you can't hide my shine when it's real. When you have the shine of the Holy Spirit working in and through you, you cannot hide. We cannot hide that, but nor do we want to. Nor do we want to. And then he says this, holding fast, verse 16, holding fast the word, once again, of life, of vitality, of zoe, the Greek word, of life, of vitality, of mental vigor and physical strength because God gives us what we need to do his work. And first and foremost, we need a heart that's bent towards the ways of God and our heart, because we love him, we start to read his word. Our mind becomes transformed to speak and to live out his word. That, and then he says, he goes, holding fast the word of life so that, what does he say? So that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. What is he saying there? That I have... So that I'm going to hold fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. When Jesus Christ takes me home, I'm going to rejoice. Why? Because we're going to hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen? Don't we all want to hear that? Because we lived out the masterpiece that we were meant to live out. What the word vain is that he goes, I'm going to rejoice. 
because I'm not going to run in vain and I'm not going to labor in vain because I'm going to hold fast to the word of life. Holding fast is setting the word before us. It's holding fast. It's, it's holding forth the word of God. So if you don't know how to walk, if I don't know how to walk or what to do, Lord God, what does your word say? Give me clarity of mind when I go over a verse and I'm not understanding it. Lord, I don't understand this passage. And I'm not going to right away run to a commentary or somebody else's thought. You know why? Because it's God himself who teaches me. He's the commentary I want. He's, he's, all, he's all the extra special notes that I want. Holy Spirit, you said that I know all things, that you're going to teach me, that you're going to guide me with your eye, that you're going to show me the way you, I should go, that you're going to lead me, that you're going to grow me. Oh, Lord, God, I don't understand this, but lead me and guide me, and I want your understanding. That's it. <laughs> Cup full. So that when you come to take me home, my labor and my time was not in vain. You know what the word in vain means? Fruitless. Fruitless. That we have nothing to show. Not that we lose our salvation, but we have nothing to show because of our salvation. That's what fruitless means. You were saved and praise God for that, but we did nothing. We have, were fruitless. The fruit of the Spirit is not living through us because we're not submitted to the Holy Spirit of God. There's no fruit on our branch because we're not submitted to the vine and the vine dresser. We only start to produce fruit and it just hangs low because there's so much fruit when we're surrendered to the vine dresser, to the Father, our Abba Father, because of what Jesus, because Jesus, what Jesus did and he gave us access to the Holy Throne of God. And it's through his power that we become fruitful. That we realize grace is a joyful thing. When we take time to bask in it day in and day out. Amen? That's my desire. That we become so fruitful and so full of grace. That whoever sees us will see God himself shining through us. And if that is your desire, I'm going to end with this. I just ask you, if that is your desire, kneel with me right now in prayer. Awesome, Abba, Father. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you because you fill our cup. Thank you because we know sins forgotten are sins forgiven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, that you forgive us and forget our sin. We can't thank you enough. Oh, Lord God, we just praise you once again for giving us the privilege to hear and see you through your word. Thank you, Lord, that we may use this spiritual food to finish the work that we have been called to do. Father, it's all about you, your glory, your honor. We just have the privilege to be used by you and be called your son, your daughter. Father, help us to live up to our calling. Help us to enjoy the process of becoming your masterpiece. Oh, Lord, may every day be lived in oneness with you. Father, forgive us if we have wasted time in idleness, maybe even bored with your ways. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us for wasted time. But today is a new day, Lord. So please take it and use it and continually draw me to yourself because of your loving kindness, so that we can all become the masterpiece, one that sings psalms and hymns wherever we go and blesses others because of the work you're doing in us. Father, thank you once again. Bless my brothers and sisters here. May we all yearn to hear the words, well done, my good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name, amen.